Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Matt's Cigars and Whiskies. Now this episode we're going to be reviewing another whiskey. Now this whiskey is the first whiskey I've received from a new club I've joined. Now this club is an online club, it's called the Somerton Whiskey Club. You pay £50 every two months and on that second month where you pay the £50 you receive a bottle through the post. Now this bottle could be ab absolutely anything obviously it's going to be a whiskey of some description but you never know what you're going to get and that to me is all part of the fun of joining the club like i say this is the first whiskey i have received from them and it's one i had never ever tried before i've never even tried a cotswolds before it's a distillery that has completely evaded me uh, it's one that i've never really felt like delving into to be honest with you it's never attracted me to it that much i do like my english whiskey don't get me wrong now this is a 50 percenter it's called the cotswolds reserve 50 percent matured in first fill bourbon and shaved toasted recharred red wine casks it's natural coloration no chill filter 5,000 bottles produced in this batch. Now, just give you a quick little bit of spiel from the back. Uh, Cotswold Sing Reserve Single Malt is handcrafted in small batches from grain to glass in our beautiful distillery in the North Cotswold using 100% locally grown floor malted barley. Double distilled in traditional copper pot stills and matured in premium bourbon, red wine casks, now it just says standard red wine cast on there, uh, I've read up, it says shaved, toasted, recharred. Before blended and bottled right here at the distillery, we hope you enjoy the smooth, elegant and well-balanced whiskey. And obviously it says on the back, natural colour, natural colour, non-chill filtered. Lovely looking bottle, first of all the aesthetics of it, it is a nice looking bottle. The uh, labelling on it is quite good, nice heavy bottle as well, you know, it feels... Feels, it feels like it should do for a £50 bottle of whiskey, as in the actual bottle itself. If that sounds weird or not, sometimes you get bottles, and I, I don't know, I like looking at the aesthetics of them, and I look at them and I think that's a bit of a tacky looking bottle, but that's a nice one. It's not bad at all, not bad at all, but this is the juice in question. Now, I don't know if you can see that. Golden coloration. Obviously, it is natural coloured, no chill filtration going on in there. Leg-wise for 50%, it does cling, it does hold, it does say there's going to be a fairly nice viscosity to it within the mouth. Uh, 50%, like I say, is the higher-ish end of the ABV. It's above the 40%, 46% cut-off where you'd normally find the non-chill filtration whiskey starting. But like I say, it does look like it's going to hold in the mouth quite nicely. Now, first of all, let's take this on the nose. What I'm going to do is, I'm going to do it for the first time in this video, and I'm going to carry on from now on. I'll do a total nose in, taste and finish, normal, and then I will add three drops of water and give you a view of whether the water does change the whiskey or not and opens it up. So let's give a smell of this one. First of all, you can definitely smell the youthfulness within this whiskey. It smells prickly. You know, it smells, it does smell quite young. There's not, it doesn't smell very strong either, but there is a slight citric note in there. To be honest with you, on the nose, there's not really too much going on in there in my eyes. But that is just like I say, straight out of the bottle. Uh, there's been no water added to that, nothing to see if it'll open up. Nose wise from the bottle, it's not that great. It doesn't, it doesn't excite me when I smell it. But let's take it on the palate and let's see if that's any different. Oh, straight away. Loads of spice, loads of ginger, loads of cinnamon coming through. Very burning in the mouth. You can definitely feel the 50% alcohol content in it. You can definitely feel the prickliness, like I say, of a youthful spirit. There's a lot, a lot of prickleness to that. But there's also a slight vanilla going on in there as well. Don't get me wrong, it's not awful, but I wouldn't actually say that it's really, it's not really inviting me into it when I taste it either, you know? It's, 
you can taste the youthfulness in it, you can taste the prickliness of it. You know, it is a burning sensation in the mouth. There might even be a hint of clove going on in there as well. Definite ginger and cinnamon coming through. I mean, if you like that in a whiskey, then fair enough. But to me, that is not really very inviting. Now, run the finish on this, it is fairly dry. I get pears coming through, but there's also a lot of tannins going on in there. That could be the red wine influence coming through and giving that within the finish. Now, let's add three drops of water to this. Let's see if it opens it up at all. One, two, three. Now let's see if that makes any difference at all. Oh wow. You'd be surprised how little water, as in even three drops, can open up a whiskey. It really can. Much better. What I'm getting from this now with the water added in there, there's caramel coming through, there's chocolate. The youthful prickle has, I wouldn't say vanished, but it's not there as much anymore. It's sitting at the back. There is a less, as more, there's less citric coming through, but there's also, in my eyes, I can smell a slight char coming through as well once I've added the water to that. Smells good. It smells a lot better than it did without the water added. You know, it smells a lot better than straight out of the bottle. But let's see if we can take any difference from that on the taste as well. Mmm. Oh, wow. The spice has more or less gone. It's definitely there. You can definitely feel there's a bit of heat at the front of that. But the spice, the spice has been taken away by that addition of water. It's a lot sweeter, it's a lot calmer. Getting grapes coming through, chocolate, red berries, vanilla. And at the back of that as well, I'd definitely say there's a slight spearmint. There's a cooling going around in the mouth. Whereas before it was heat, it was prickle, it was youthfulness. Now there's like an air, you can feel like a cooler air going around, like I say, a spearmint type taste. That is absolutely delicious with the water added. It has really opened it up. It's taken away, like I say, the youthful spirit that's in there, and it's replaced the initial harsh E type flavors with a much, much more rounded and complex juice. Now, the finish on that. It's sweeter, it's juicier, there's more berries coming through. There's a knot of vanilla coming through. And towards the back of it, again, I'm definitely getting spearmint. I really am definitely getting spearmint, like I say. Like a cooling, minty type taste going around the mouth. So without the water, I wasn't too impressed, to be honest with you. But with the addition of some drops of water, that has really opened up. It has really become a beautiful bit of drink, to be honest with you. It's a beautiful juice with the water added. It just shows you, doesn't it? It really does. How much you can change the taste of whiskey with the slightest addition of water. But anyway, I'm going to leave that there. What I will say, the Summerton Whiskey Club for my first bottle, very happy with it. It's opened my eyes straight away to a new distillery, which is the reason I joined the Summerton Club. I just wanted to experience new things, things that maybe I wouldn't think of trying, that obviously Dan from the Whiskey Club picks out and sends to people. Definitely looking forward to see what comes through next month. The Cotswolds Reserve Single Malt Whiskey. Not a bad drop at all. Right, anyway, I'm going to leave that there. Thank you very much. You take care of yourselves, and I will see you in the next review.